Welcome Danny Hargreaves to Screen Careers today. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Now your role on a film set is that of a special effects supervisor. You also by now own your own company, Real SFX. Could you explain to me what your responsibilities are as a special effects supervisor on a film set? Okay, well first of all, thanks Lloyd for having me. Uh, this is a great thing to be involved in, so more than happy to help and give some people some advice on how to get into the industry. But basically my, my role um, in a nutshell is creating the chaos on set, all right? So it is being responsible for the special effects that you see on the show. Uh, to be completely, there's the visual side of things, which is done by CGI, which is the computer generated imagery. And then you get the practical element, which is what is the old fashioned special effects sense. So I'm in charge of all the uh, elemental effects. So uh, rain, wind, uh, snow, uh, the fire effects that you see setting fire to sets and, and people, <laughs> um, uh, blowing up sets, blowing up cars, bullet hits, all of those type of things. So my role is pretty complex, but, um, but it's, it, it's very rewarding and, and, uh, you know, it's good fun to do, you know. And um, it feels to me like you need quite a big team around you to to make this happen on set as well, Danny. Yeah, but so, so, yeah, so I, I've got a big team that works with me here at Real SFX. Um, I've worked in the industry now for oh, 24 or so years. You know, I started on productions like London's Burning and, and Thief Takers and Soldier Soldier. You remember those programs? So I was very, very young. Um, and one thing uh, working on these productions, even back then, is that the huge amount of people that, that, that work with us. So I work really hard to put a great team around me, um, which is, uh, you know, great. We're a, we're a great little unit um, and we, we get to work on a variety of different shows. So it's not just uh, one or two productions. Working in special effects means that you're part of a film crew on many different shows so we'll be going on one show to blow up a car uh, another one uh, doing a snow scene uh, another day doing some bullet hits and then the other day i'll be collapsing a set somewhere else and that could just be one week you know not just six months you know my weeks are quite hilarious you know i'll be working on doctor who blowing up a spaceship and then the following day i'll be doing something on um, Peaky Blinders where someone's getting shot and you know that's just Monday and Tuesday so it's quite it's quite full-on but it's 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 great fun. So Danny Hargreaves left school <laughs> and yeah. I'm really keen to signpost for our audience today. Okay. What are those stepping stones into the special effects and um, chaotic department as you called it? <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't very good at school, all right? I spent a lot of time playing sport. I I love sport. Um, I loved girls. <laughs> and, you know, um, I, I, I was that guy that was uh, well into sport, captain of this and that. And, and, you know, and so for me, academically, I was not great. Um, I was quite frustrated at school, uh, although I massively enjoyed art. So I like creativity. Um, and what I found was I, there wasn't really anything that, that really interested me as such. So I kind of cr was cruising when I was about 16, 17. I thought I was a bit arrogant and I thought I was going to do great. And then I did terrible in my GCSEs. And it was a real turning point for me that I did a really bad shall we say, um, I had bad results, you know, I, I came out, I think with a B and a C and it was just, I, I thought I was going to do okay. And the arrogance of thinking, yeah, I'll be all right, but I wasn't all right. So that was the first shock for me that, uh, the reality, one thing that you do do when you're at school is, um, you're in this sense of, of, uh, of this bubble at school. And then before you know it, you finish that bubble, don't you? It's like all of a sudden, there you go, guys crack on. And, so it was it was quite a reality check for me but around that sort of time i was just starting to take an interest into cinema um and i i was starting to watch kind of behind the scenes things about how how to create some of the special effects and and for me i i watched a behind the scenes look at terminator 2 and for me it introduced me 
uh, to the world of, of filmmaking and and there was a dude on there that was blowing up stuff and I was like my god there's actually somebody that does that you know <laughs> so for me I I kind of like there was no internet then I'm I guess I am that old it was you know <laughs> there was no internet there was like like it was it was very hard to find information I, I am it, and and for me at the time my mum and dad owned a pub and there was a guy that came into the pub who worked for the BBC and he introduced me to an old special effects guy who, who's not with us anymore, but he, he managed to get some information to me about special effects and he actually worked on Doctor Who, can you believe it? So he introduced me to what is special effects and I was like, this is really interesting and hence when, when I started watching behind the scenes things, it, it, signed, it did something in me, it sort of resonated in me. And I thought, you know what, this, this seems like a really cool industry. So did some research, found companies um, uh, that uh, do special effects. And one morning I was watching, do you remember the Big Breakfast? Uh, there was a Channel 4 morning program. And uh, they were at, there was a special effects company on there that, that was uh, advertising courses that you can learn, pay money and come and learn special effects bullet hits. Now, I hounded those people, you know, I found out their details, um, looked on the old phone book and uh, contacted them and basically begged them to give me a job. And, um, and so, so, so at, and this is still a relatively young age. I was only 14 at the time. Uh, uh, and then by about 15, around the time I wasn't doing great at school, uh, I was already doing work experience, um, doing uh, working for free. Yeah. traveling to London, uh, working for free. And then obviously not doing well in my GCSEs meant that um, I already found myself another career path, which was potentially going to college as part of um, an apprenticeship. Um, so, so essentially by having that first communication uh, gave me a direction, uh, knowing that I wanted to get into special effects. I'd already found a company that did it. Um, I looked at courses um, to study engineering um, because engineering, again, was part of the whole um, catalyst, uh, learning how to do what I wanted to do, knowing what I had to do to do it meant that I suddenly began, began interest in, in stuff that I hadn't done before. Right. So all of a sudden I was starting a college um, uh, apprenticeship learning engineering. And so all of a sudden science started becoming quite interesting to me. You know, I hadn't taken an interest in science before, um, but all of a sudden, because it was so relevant to my end career, I essentially took a more of an interest then. And, and it wasn't until I left school did I actually start have, a, have a, an interest in science. And then essentially uh, that company then took me on as an apprentice, um, I lied about my age, as I said, which was uh, always a bit awkward when they're giving me a job. And um, anyway, uh, I finally took it, and, and then I did a um, I did a day course uh, apprenticeship. And and for me, and as we do here at Realist Effects, is we really champion apprenticeships. You know, uh, universities are fantastic as well, but you've got to appreciate twenty twenty five or so years ago, there was no university courses then to learn special effects. So essentially a college college day release college course was brilliant i got to study mechanical engineering and then i furthered my education in, into mechanical electrical engineering and i did a um a diploma and a hnc in mechanical science so the progression there was simply leaving school not doing very well but finding a passion which was filmmaking and then tailoring my my education around that passion and then moving forward with that it just gave me i don't know it just gave me that direction that i needed at the age of 16 17 when you need that direction you know um and so i moved to london at the age of 17 and i think about it now i've got a 14 year old son and i can't imagine him doing this but uh <laughs> i moved to london uh at the age of 16 17 um yeah. and i lived 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 there um and lived and worked there and, 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 and essentially just worked my way through the progressional stages within that special effects company from sweeping the floor to running Doctor Who, you know. So, yeah. so it, it's, been, it's been a journey, um, but it's, 
it's it's been a journey I've enjoyed. You know, I've got to do some incredible things. Uh, I've been to some amazing places. I've done some amazing things, and I've done some really horrible things filming. So it's um, it's it has been a journey, but it's um, it's a passion I love. And and I think if you're in filmmaking, you have to love what you do because you're a long time doing it, and it isn't great all the time. But it's 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 it can be, you know. Just for a new entrant and somebody who um, is trying to make that same journey, hopefully very similar to yeah. yourself or not similar to yourself, however way, um, now you mentioned you have apprenticeships that you're willing to provide through your own company. If you were to, um, to take on an apprentice, what would you be looking at in that individual approaching your company? So we, we, as I said, champion apprenticeships. We, do you know what? We have uh, seven or eight. So Real Effects have been running for 10 years now. We have, wait, well, 11 years now. Yeah. And within that time, we've, we've educated a good, say, eight or, I don't know exactly numbers, I should know, no. We've had about eight people, eight or nine people come through the apprenticeship here at Real Effects. I uh, started off with Dewey, who you know. Uh, he he started off as an apprentice, um, and he's gone on to fantastic things. Um, and then recent, right up to recently, we've had three apprentices last year, um, two of which are still here today with me today. Um, and for me, what it does, it gives on-site training. So and also it gives them a chance to work in that sector first before actually committing to it. So essentially they'll work very closely with us um, and we'll tailor made uh, their training based around the job eventually that they'll, they'll get. Um, and it, it just gives them an experience to, to work in that sector before committing. Um, but what do I look like, look for? I mean, I just look for a little spark. I know it sounds weird. Um, anyone who I sit around a table and think about, you know, what I think you're great. I think you're great. You know, I wouldn't necessarily always go for the person with the most obvious person with all the best um, qualifications. Um, someone's got to have a little I don't know, a twinkle in their eye. You know, they just they they want to be. They just want to be they just want to be there they want to be the reason why they want to meet you is because they really want a job and what are you going to do that's going to convince me to give you a job you know and as i said not everyone's the people that we've taken on here i mean the apprentices that worked for me one of them did a history in he's done a he's done a master's in welsh history the other one worked for a car second heart car second hand car sales company another one was a plumber you know None of them is relevant to filming. So, but what we've done is we've taken those people and we've just sort of molded them into this sort of special effects person. Um, and, and, and really for me, like anything that they've done in the past, you know, any interest or anything they've been committed to is also really appealing because it shows to me that they don't like to quit and they like to stay with things. And, you know, and that could be really relevant uh, in this world where, um, you know, I'm going to commit a lot of time and a lot of my energy and, you know, will I get, what do I get at the end of it? I, I like people that see things through, you know, and, but also prepare to work hard. It's, yeah. it is hard work. It's long hours. Yeah. You're going to get cold. You're going to get wet. Um, probably going to get shouted at, but not by me, but generally first assistants, uh, as you will know, Lloyd. So, um, you know, so <laughs> yeah, you shouted at me a few times. So it's, um, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough. Um, so it's, it's, it's important that they, they're, they're prepared to work, you know. I compliment you as a company for, for having apprenticeship uh, ship, uh, schemes because yeah. in, in this day and age, there are not many available to um, the younger generation really? to partake with and, and it's a it's a truly good thing that, that your company is doing and I compliment I you. I mean for me it was it was one of the first things that was so important to me coming through an apprenticeship myself through special effects you know I'm one of the few people that are you know when I first started there wasn't apprenticeships and special effects it was the old guard so to speak 
So I'm one of the first generation apprentices to come through special effects and come out the other side. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I never had an ambition to own my own company. I mean, why would I do that? It's too much stress. But here I am with a massive company with lots of people. And it's all I wanted to do was work around the world on some of the biggest productions. But I ended up with this huge monster of a company. But I wouldn't have it any other way now. It's funny how how your, your, your journey um, um sort of goes like you know it changes from left to right so and so, i love the journey you've made from london and you've actually based your company here in wales yeah now. is that important to you as as uh, personally to, to have established a company here in wales yeah um, i think yeah absolutely i mean one of the, one of my proudest achievements here in uh, working and living in wales is taking my welsh crew and working in productions all over the world. Um, uh, as you know, like a lot of my work came from being based in Cardiff. So, so I would work on Doctor Who and Da Vinci's Demons and Sherlock. And I was a local company that was, the productions were thought, oh, you know, we'll give them a shot because, uh, you know, we don't need to pay for hotel rooms. And that's that brutal. You know, sometimes you get jobs just based on location, but, training my company over the 10 years that I've had and taking people that were former second-hand car dealers um, and turning them into special effects guys but now working on some of the biggest films in the world and it might not be me um, you know I'll take them to Birmingham to go or Manchester to do Peaky Blinders or we'll go and work on a feature film up north or they might as freelancers then go and work on the Avengers or go and work on James Bond for other companies or other individuals and for me that's my proudest achievement you know we talk about winning awards or you 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 know uh, meet whatever but my 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 most like um best thing i've ever created or achieved is create in a team that are sought after for any production um and taking them away from cardiff and they can work they can put them plonk them in any film set all over the world just looking for a, a little bit of a tip tips and advice for I am um, a new entrance trying to get their first foot on, on the ladder of special yep. effects. Um, yeah. um, special effects or generally the film industry, Lloyd, what do no, you reckon? For special effects and, oh. and, and for your company, because I think this is a good moment to signpost. I'd imagine if they can Google uh, your company name, Real SFX, and get your email addresses and send emails to you and knock on your door, there could be an opportunity at some point or other um, yeah. later on in the future. So it might be, you know, I'm just kind of signposting to our audience now that that yeah. should be a, a moment to do with yeah, that. Absolutely. I mean, we're always looking for fresh talent. Uh, I'd be crazy if I said I wasn't. Um, we, unfortunately, due to the pandemic at the moment, and it's, it's important to highlight that at the moment it's a difficult time for everyone um the event industry because at the end of the day i don't just work in special effects and, and film and tv we are involved in events as well and i'm terribly upset with how the events uh, industry is at the moment uh we are actually um that on the flip side the filming and tv industry is very busy um because at the end of the day everyone in lockdown has been watching tv and box sets and stuff so there is a huge amount of production that's desperate to get cracking. So what I'm trying to do is take on a lot of event teams at the moment. We've got a few guys coming to join us from, from who normally do festivals and stuff, which is great because it just means that I can give that level of work. Uh, and it's, it's a very easy um, uh, thing to suddenly flip and do, do filmmaking. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's, it's for anyone that's willing to get into special effects, anyone that's willing to get into the film industry, um, it's not easy. Um, I can't sugarcoat it, um, but what you have to do is be better than anyone else. So that means that you're gonna have to get up earlier than the next person. You're gonna have to stay a little bit later than the next person. You're gonna have to do your research. You're gonna have to be willing to do anything, um, you know, and just get it done um, and, there's no like you know i get a, i get a lot of cvs um so much so that i 
um, I pass them downstairs now, and the guys, the guys deal with them. But sending a CV isn't enough. Now, I shouldn't say this because I don't want people turning up at my door, okay? <laughs> but um, sending a CV and ticking that box and going, yeah, well, I sent them my CV is not good enough. You need to present that CV in person at the door rather than actually emailing it. I mean, I can send an email across the world in a second, but the fact that someone's made the effort and I gave a job to a girl who came in, I didn't know who she was. She handed me her, her resume and she, and within a couple of weeks, I remember her and I was like, what, what about that girl that came in? Cause I like the fact that she came in and handed me her CV yeah. and, um, and she worked, for, she's worked for us for a year now. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, I think it's, I love, I love the fact that, you know, you just got to do a bit more, you know, there's always going to be someone else and it works for me as well. I have, it hasn't changed for me when I pitch for a job and we are pitching for some really big projects at the moment. Um, sending an email just isn't enough. You've got to follow it up. You've got to make a phone call. You've got to go down there. You've got to do your research. You've got to speak to the people that, that, that do it. Um, and if you are fortunate enough to get an opportunity, harness that opportunity, make sure you're early, don't be late, don't be cocky, <laughs> and just work hard, just work hard. And when I say, I, Danny, I we've been, we oh. have been fortunate on Screen Careers to hear those stories and hear that wonderful wisdom and advice that you've given to our, our audience today. And um, just to finish off, what have, has there been any career highlights that you'd like to partake with us? Oh man, I've done, oh, I mean, every day is a highlight, you know, um, I, I can't show you because you can't see them, but the scripts I've got in front of me are so exciting. Um, so I've done some amazing things. I've, I've traveled around the world, done some incredible stuff. Highlights for me, working with certain actors, um, building my team, um, having some great stories, not all that I can tell right now, um, <laughs> memories, but the most exciting for me is, is getting a phone call and then all of a sudden it flips and I'm on a flight the next day. Unfortunately, I can't do it at the moment, but I like the moments where you go, oh, Danny, are you available to do this war film in so-and-so in Thailand? Can you get on a flight tomorrow? They're super cool and I love that. And I've got a couple of those cheeky little scripts in front of me right now that I'm breaking down and I think if they come off, watch this space. It's going to be really exciting. Well, Danny, I wish you well upon all your journeys to come, and I wish you well as a team as well. It's 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 um it, it's very uh, rest assuring to hear that there's a company based in Wales in the yeah. film industry. Very proud to be based offering, in Wales. Um, apprenticeships as well, which yeah. is very a huge compliment from me to you. Um, no Danny Hargreaves, thank you for joining us here today at Screen Careers. Diochiti. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks so much. Thank. Good luck, everyone. Thank you.